Now, the stage and screen career of our final guest spans, well, our first guest, rather, spans four decades. Well, she's not final, she's second, I suppose. We've only had one on. Um, it's only now she's had time to put her life onto page. And what a career. You uh, know you're onto a winner when Dame Judi Dench presents you with the Best Actress Wearing a Grey Cardigan Award. However, of all her performances, who would have thought that her most iconic would be as the owner of a little antique shop in Manchester for her? Here to relive her life up to now, please welcome Celia Imre. Welcome. Do you know what that marvelous never... hair I had then, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> was it all your own? No. Yeah. Well, it was yours because you owned it. Um, do you know it never stops being funny? I know. I was uh, laughing too. Who'd, who'd have thought, you know, that uh, when you think back on Acorn Antiques, it feels like it ran forever and ever, but it was actually only for a couple of years, wasn't I it? I know, and, and only ever sort of seven minutes at the end of each programme too. Do people still come up and quote bits to you? They do, and they expect me to answer back, yes. but I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it'll ever come back? Who knows? Might. I think that's what's so clever about Victoria, though, because she knew when yeah. to stop. Yeah. But um, what fun with the telephone, though. I can remember hitting the telephone really hard when it carried on ringing when I was trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but then it went on stage, didn't it? Yes. So, I mean, how was that? How different was that? Well, I, I couldn't quite see how it was going to work for about yeah. two and a half hours since it was only a it very did, though. short... It did, though. It was fab, I saw it. absolutely <laughs> did. I absolutely loved it. Um, and I got to have a song and dance as well. Exactly. Well, you do sing, though, don't you? You are a singer. Mm, well... Mm. You are. I think you're very mm. modest. I think you're a very good singer. I'd love to have a go, but I'm not trained or anything like that. But I do dance. Oh, look, was that me, then, dancing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah, my tap dance. dance. <laughs> yes. Oh, look. Oh, I God. mean, I say this every time, and I get really excited every time you come on, and oh. every time I say it, it's because I think Sherry and I both say, as actresses whose career have diversified a little bit, Celia's career is the one that we possibly envy the most because, oh, because you've just done the, you know, the amazing things like the high comedy and things like that and lots of sort of dips into kind of light entertainment, as it were. Mm -hmm. But then you go off and play Hedda a Garbler or you have some kind of amazing... I wish. Class, well, can, well, I mean, But you know what yeah. I mean? But you have a, a sort bit of... Serious. A bit of a bit of a, a bit of a serious side. side. Do you have... Do you have a favourite, or you have you just have enjoyed the variety that your career has, has, has kind of brought to you? Well, I've loved playing Miss Babs, of course, but um, I suppose the only thing, you can't really choose. That's the thing. It all goes up and down. But I just try and do something as different as I possibly can to the last yeah. thing. But you've always got an amazing new project. Like, you've got a new amazing new project coming up now, haven't you? Something really exciting. What's that? You've got the Titanic thing, isn't it? Oh, yes, I thought you we were going to talk about my book. That's quite exciting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> coming to that, Celia. <laughs> we're coming to that. <laughs> no, I'm just about, I'm just about to be, um, well, close shave on the Titanic. Um, uh, Julian Fellows has written a new four-part series. That's Gosford Park, Julian Fellows, am yeah. I right? And, yeah. and, Downton uh, and Downton Abbey. And Downton Abbey, yeah. Um, and, and Monica of the Glen. Oh, yes. Yes, that's yeah. right. And, um, and, and I play uh, somebody who's in first class. Her husband's bought her a first class ticket, but actually she's in trade. Oh. So she doesn't understand why she's not invited to all the posh parties. And um, if you heard her running along the deck behind you, everybody would go, oh. God, and try and hide. You play she's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned as well about, you know, Denise touched on your, your the, the variety of different roles that you've had. Now, here's your a book, book that okay. you mentioned. Oh, Here we go. There it is. Yeah. One of the most refreshing bits in it is is that you, you're you absolutely honest about what it's like in the fact that an actor's life does ebb and flow. It goes up and down, and you're not actually resting. What you're doing is frantically scurrying around, <laughs> trying to work. find That's more, right. terrified. more work. Terrified. Well, I've said it's like being on, uh, on the board of a Snakes and Ladders, which I think is sort That's of exactly yeah. what it is, actually, because you do get some fabulous runs up a ladder, and then yeah. the next bit there might be some ghastly snake on the other, uh, just about to catch you. But the, the picture on the back is the real me, that with one. my knickers falling down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the real now, me. <laughs> well, no. You also liken uh, a career in acting to like being on a trapeze. That's a great mm. analogy, isn't it? It is good. So, what is it? You say you've got to... It's been on this you just you jump off one and hope there's another... And one. hope there's another coming flying by to yeah. jump onto. Do you know and the other... You've sorry, been lucky, though, the haven't other you? Thing very that, lucky. That, that very I, lucky. Um, 
that, that, that I love. As, and, and as I say, this, this is just what, what, what I think, is that you have some fantastic thoroughbred friends, people like Dame Gigi Dench. I know. And what I, what I like and what I try to do in my little minor way is that although you take your careers incredibly seriously, you don't take yourself seriously. So I love, I love the, the stories of you and Dame Judy and the practical jokes and all that kind of thing, even though it's not taking away from how, you know, how seriously you take your craft. Well, the, the thing is, it's a great life. I'd never put anybody off, um, but you've got to want to do it or die, otherwise there's sort of no point. Yeah. But actually, there's also no point in being all serious about mm. it. Because I sort of can't bear it if people all go around, oh. you know, oh, it's such a hard life. It isn't, it's marvellous. Yeah. It's a great life. But, you know, you've got to have a laugh all, along the way. And actually, I think the more people laugh, like Dame Judy, like yeah. Helena Bonham Carter, like Rupert Everett, they all get into hysterics, and then good work comes. Was in. it Dame Judy that you were doing the drunken curtain calls with? <gasps> yes, yeah. Did you need that Ooh, bit. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, we were doing a play um, called The Sea at the National, which was actually a bit serious, and um, she and I didn't have the last act to do anything. We'd done our our bit where we were trying to outdo each other singing a hymn on a hillside. And we tried to outdo each other with descants, which got hysterical. Um, but we weren't on the last page, so we used to sneak into the quick change um, room and ha have a bottle of champagne. <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> and lobster Quite sometimes, right. or twiglets. Good girl. So, the, by the <laughs> so the, by the time we came out to do our curtain call, I'm sure we were absolutely staggering. <laughs> but hopefully nobody noticed. Now, one of the things you, you said about your book, sorry, sorry <coughs> is that you're, you're really pleased that you wrote it yourself because mm. your humour is very naughty and if somebody else had tried to write it, they might not have captured the nuances and it would have maybe sounded like you're just being terribly rude. Are you still as naughty as you were as some of the things you've touched on when you are little? Are you still I a am, naughty girl. I am, actually. But the thing is, as Eleanor Bron once said to me, you can't uh, write irony. And sometimes you need to be in front of yeah. somebody with a twinkle yeah. in your yeah. eye just to... Uh, let, to get it. To reassure them that actually yeah. um, you're, you're having a joke. I went up to Colin Firth when I first met him. Um, he was doing uh, Bridget Jones. And I was looking at him across the road thinking, God, he's attractive, because he is, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he'd done all this stuff. And then, I don't know, the devil got in me. And I walked up to him, total stranger, and said to him, have you done much? Uh, ha have you done much? Uh, sorry, I've ruined it now. Um, I said to him, have you done much comedy? And he looked at me in horror, like <laughs> you, and sort of said, no, why? And I said, just wondered, and walked away. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I'd done it. I, I don't know what happened to me. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, luckily, he sort of got some sort of twinkle in my eye and played yeah. back. But, <gasps> Does he know. still talk to you? He, yes, but he calls himself the king of comedy now. And I, <laughs> I have to curtsy to him every time I see him. <laughs> well, all, it, there's all that and more in Celia Imrie's new book, The Happy Hoofer, which is on sale now in all good bookshops. <laughs> Lovely to see you again, Celia. Celia Thank Imrie, you. everyone. Woo! Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.